Shoot it like that, we can make it pass Got too much trip, yeah, I know she can't hold it Yeah, I know your bitch, even though she got COVID But they never seen a young nigga get his roses We ain't even got a whole hand, so I love shit Spit on that shit, but don't get it on my tuck So deadly yeah. with the hair, though, you really, really cut yeah. through Mm. Anyway, that's what I do. So, with that said, just pattern wise, what you think I'm gonna do with the network? Y'all don't want it with me. I've been letting y'all breathe. I'm chilling, I'm minding my business. I have no beef with anybody. Pause. I'm looking past it. So, Jay Z, if I've offended you, I apologize. Leo Cohen, if I offended you, I apologize. Steve Stout, if I've offended you, I apologize. Just because you don't have the same morals and principles, it's cool. I'm not angry no more. I did what I had to do. I, I was a little aggravated about Aaliyah, so y'all just caught the brunt end of it. It was therapy. You know, I, I called Jim Jones today and I was like I miss him. I don't know y'all know it, but I miss him. As a brother, I love his family. I don't want I want I want him to be happy. And Jay, you know, the friendship we had was cool, man. I just miss it. But whatever he doing, he doing, but I'm cool with it, bro. I'm sorry, man. I I wasn't myself for a second. Ali had me fucked up. And Biggs, I'm sorry, bro, if I offended you. Whatever you're doing, I'm with it. I love you, man. And I know you're mad at me, but whatever. I'm sorry. I can admit it. You know, when I make some money, I'll send you something. It's because you're my brother. I love your family. Welcome to Show Face News. You can call me what you want. Just don't call me woke. Make sure you subscribe right now. Make sure you notification bell. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share the video. Please leave a comment below. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Clyde the Beast. So let's talk about it. Yeah. Um, so today, this is the full documentary of the rise and fall of Dame Dash. Alright. So, how did Dame Dash go on the Breakfast Club? Promote all of this self-made entrepreneurship, black ownership, like working at nine to five and being your own boss. How did he go from that to apologizing to all the people that he called vultures? What went wrong? What happened? Well, it all started with that Breakfast Club interview that happened six years ago, okay? The most infamous interview from Dame Dash known today they went viral okay now this this is you know post Rockefeller <clears throat> this is post Rockefeller you know after all that because we know that they broke up and he blames Leo Cohen for the reason Rockefeller disbanded and getting into the head of Jay-Z all right because it's Dame Dash is a co-founder of Rockefeller Records but <clears throat> it is now owned by Island Def Jam okay but anyway back to this Breakfast Club interview where he goes off on DJ MV Angela Yee in Petamane aka Charlemagne alright he goes off on them talking about black business promoting you know entrepreneurship and how you could be your own boss and telling everyone they're not bosses and that they're working for someone and they don't have their own brand right which was a positive message you know a very positive message but some way somehow you know all of that went south <laughs> you know so he was promoting he was promoting his own brand all right he had this thing called Hip Hop Motivation where he worked with Ken Yada Griggs alright so after all the Breakfast Club fiasco you know he built further upon it he built further upon this whole entrepreneurship thing that he was promoting here online going viral with he, he, he worked with 
Kenyatta Griggs with the hip hop motivation. And together, they created the book Culture Vultures. In this book, they talk about people who are in the hip hop culture that vulture off of that culture, that genre of music and lifestyle, right? So they built that, you know, and, and that lasted for a little bit. And again, you know, Dane was making headlines on social media now, you know, post his Rockefeller days, you know, Dane's second claim to fame was just being an internet guy, being that guy who would promote ownership, promoting entrepreneurship. He, that, that's what he was known for on the internet. You understand? So him and Kenyatta had the hip hop motivation, was doing the culture vulture videos and everything else. Dame would always say, you know, I'm only wearing Dame Dash, I'm not wearing Versace, I'm not wearing Givenchy and all that other shit. I'm wearing Dame Dash, I'm wearing me. This is my clothing line. You understand? And it was a good message. You know, a lot of people were influenced by that and they liked where he was going with it and it seemed very genuine. You understand? And, you know, it, it only, you know, got further and further. You understand that he created Dame Dash TV or Dame Dash Network, you know, and it's actually a channel, I believe, on like Fire Stick and whatnot, I believe. Okay, because I remember when this was coming out, you know, and they released the book Culture Vultures in 2017. So in 2017, the book Culture Vultures was released, all right, to the public, which was great and all, all right? In 2018, you know, they were still promoting the book. Dame Dash was still out here, you know, doing interviews and promoting black business and shaming all of the vultures that he claimed were vultures and people who have crossed him, saying they're fake and et cetera, all right? Now, this lasted up until around 2018. You know, he was going strong. He had a positive message. It was very strong. It was a good message to everyone out there. But then what happens? Wood took a turn for the worse. Well, things seem to be going great in the whole Dame Dash Studios. Studios, I believe it's called. Dame Dash Studios is coming into play. Dame Dash TV, Studios, whatever, all right? This is an actual channel, by the way, all right? So this was coming into play in about 2018. Now, while this is happening, you know what happens? The Rock Nation brunch happened. Now, if you can remember, the Rock Nation brunch had all kinds of top tier celebrities there, from rappers to actors, all black, okay? All black people. You know, you had Meek Mill, you had Swiss Beats, you had all types of Kevin Hart, you know, just big names. Black names who were successful. You know, you know what I mean? They had all types of people there. Damn near everyone was there. Even Griselda was there. Which is crazy, right? So, anywho, you know, the Rock Nation brunch happened. And then the next thing you know, there's a video that was posted on Dame Dash's Instagram that was later deleted. And I remember this video. Because I was following Dame Dash at the time on Instagram. Dame Dash goes on record on his own Dame Dash Studios set. Crying. Damn near crying in tears. Apologizing to everyone that he called a culture vulture and everything else. Apologize to Leo Cohen. Apologize to Jay-Z who he constantly says is fake after the brunch. <laughs> you understand? Now, this would seem as though that Dame Dash was sad that he missed out on the brunch. Like he feel like he was missing out and he wasn't a part of that collective of successful black entrepreneurs. He felt as though that he was left out. You know, he felt some type of way. And he started getting emotional over this. You understand? It made him emotional. And he didn't like that he wasn't a part of that. So, 
he really just ended up having a damn near meltdown, which he later on deleted over his Instagram. All right, and that happened. So this was already uh, a puncture, a bruise, <laughs> or just just a big insult to his partner Kenyatta, who we made the culture vultures book with. Right? He 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 destroyed that. That was sabotage. He literally put a huge blemish on that brand and that was over with. Kenyatta took to YouTube after the video was released and he was mad and he says he's not working with Dane and that that shit is over with and he doesn't understand why he went out his way to fuck that up. Alright? Now the book is still out there, obviously. But the message and the brand is ruined because he folded. He cracked under pressure. You understand? And this is literally the beginning of the end for Dame Dash, right? He's doing all these, you know, he's doing more interviews afterwards and whatnot. And he gets paid from people who owe him money. You understand? People who owe him money, I guess, uh, were paying him back. You know, um, the creator of Precious, the creator of Precious, the movie, he actually paid back Dame Dash some money. He I think I think he owed him like a million or something, maybe half a million. All right. But anyway, the creator, I can't remember his name right now, but I'm gonna post it up. He ended up paying back Dame Dash, right? And Dame started to get a little bit arrogant. He wasn't his usual self. You know? And he, things got weird. Things got more and more weird and it wasn't genuine from Dame. Like things, the Dame that you know that was the powerful dude that would step on everyone's toes to be an owner, to be an entrepreneur, was looking more like a sucker. You understand? He was just not, he was just on some whole different shit, you know? Getting more arrogant. Like you can't be arrogant after you just fold it and you didn't stick to your words. You didn't stick to your brand. You didn't stick to what you were standing on. Cause that seemed to be something that you were very invested in and really believed in. So now you fold it. So it no longer holds weight. <laughs> so, you know, that happens. Now, this very weekend, <laughs> this very weekend, Dame Dash is sued by Rockefeller Records, who is now on my island deputy for trying to sell Reasonable Doubt, the first Jay-Z album in forms of NFTs. All right? It's being alleged that Dame Dash tried to sell that Reasonable Doubt album in forms of NFT to get back what he felt is owed to him from that album since he was like a co-producer on the album, right? So there's that, you understand? So the downfall of Name Dash only continues. You know, you're getting a lawsuit from a company that you co-founded, you know, it only goes downhill from there. Now, Name Dash Studios are still standing and whatnot, but as far as his branding, as far as believability, he's definitely lost that. He definitely lost, you know, a following of people who believed in him after the sabotage and him cracking under pressure, you know, because he felt bad in the end about something he wasn't a part of. So... Dame Dash <laughs> literally is falling off <laughs> and is no longer as relevant, you know, as he could have been. You know, he was he was on his way again because this was his, you know, second time in the spotlight. This was his, his second goal was the internet going viral with the entrepreneurship. You understand? He, he was on his way, but now you lost your believability. You lost that character 
and everyone knew you as. You understand? You look very vulnerable. You look, you look weak, and that killed everything for Dan. That was, that was like <clears throat> the, the 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 nail in the coffin for Dan. I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest. But this is the rise and fall of Dame Dash. Let me know what you think in the comments. But this is Show Face News. Make sure you subscribe right now. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share the video. Please leave a comment below. Let me know how you feel. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Clive the Beast. This is Show Face News. And I'm out.